This is Twit. I didn't know, you did, Leo, but I didn't know that there was a thing such as cheap smartwatches for kids and babies, yeah, to which we would re- have the refrain, what could possibly go wrong? Dr. Webb, which is an, an AV firm, security firm based in Russia, recently examined four inexpensive smartwatches designed and marketed specifically for kids. Now, b- before I go any further, allow me to just suggest to anyone listening to this podcast that if they have that on their Christmas list, avoid any temptation whatsoever. You might have to purchase a $50 smartwatch for anyone you know. Dr. Webb's report is very detailed, so I'm not going to bother to describe what they found for each of the four devices. But discussing a representative example will be informative and should be sufficient (laughs) to forestall any desire anyone might have to put one of these little spyware beasties onto the wrist of anyone they know or care about. So Dr. Webb introduces the subject with a little bit of background, which I've shortened a bit. They wrote, parents always strive to take care of their children. Technology innovations help them reach this goal through various wearables like smartwatches and GPS trackers. These devices are getting close to smartphones in functionality. For example, many of them can track the child's location and travel route. These devices can also make and answer phone and video calls, receive SMS and voicemail, take pictures, and listen to their surroundings. It's even possible to enable the remote control of the device. Okay, I don't know what that means, but they but said Dr. Webb has analyzed the potential threats that such gadgets can pose to parents and their children. During their daily operation, they wrote, these devices collect and transmit data to the manufacturer's servers and make it available to parents through their personal accounts. The information obtained with smart watches is very sensitive. If malicious actors get their hands over such information, it can put children in great danger. To understand the vulnerability and dangers of children's smartwatches, Dr. Webb's specialists analyzed several several popular models chosen based upon public popularity ratings and purposefully selected models from different price ranges. We purchased all smartwatches anonymously from an online store. We carried out both static and dynamic analysis during the inspection. We searched for potential implants in in the software and possible undocumented features, as well as checked network activity, transmitted data, and how it was secured. Okay, so one of the four devices they examined was the Elari KidPhone 4G smartwatch. And yes, and isn't it pretty, Leo? I mean, it's it's beautiful. Just like mommy and daddy's. <laughs> exactly. Okay, get a load of that. This is what this beautiful looking device. Several versions they wrote of the Ilari Kidphone 4G watches exist. They're based on different hardware platforms, but they all run an Android OS and their firmware differs slightly. The primary threat of this model comes from its installed software. Its firmware has a built-in app for over-the-air updating, and this app has Trojan functionality. Firstly, they wrote, the application sends the child's geolocation data to its own remote server. Secondly, we found malicious code inside it, which is detected by Dr. Webb. That is, you know, remember, these guys are AV people. It's detected by their antiviral, anti-malware technology as android.downloader.3894. Every time the watch turns on or network connection changes, this code launches two malicious modules, android.downloader.812.origin 
and android.downloader.1049.origin. They connect to the command and control server to, ver to transmit various information and to receive commands. By default, the modules connect to the server once every eight hours. Because of this, a long delay exists between the first connection and the first time the watch is turned on, thus reducing the chance of discovery. The android.downloader812.origin module sends the user's mobile phone number and SIM card information, geolocation data, and information about the device itself to the command and control server. In response, it can receive commands to change the frequency of subsequent requests to the server, update the module, download, install, run, and uninstall apps, and load web pages. The Android Downloader .1049.origin module sends SIM card information and mobile phone number information, geolocation data, a number, a large number of data about the device and installed apps, as well as the inf info about the number of SMS, phone calls, and contacts in the phone book to this command and control server. Thus, Android Downloader. 3894, hidden in this watch, that's that parent, can be used for cyber espionage, displaying ads, and installing unwanted or even malicious apps. Okay, now, you put the picture on the screen before. I mean, which is, for me, it's sort of disarming. Um, it's a consumer product, and it's adorable and appealing-looking. Um you know, our, our, our listeners who don't have video can't see what you and I are seeing, Leo, you know, but they're very professional looking, attractive consumer devices. They look like toys, but they're definitely not. Anyone who purchases one of these little devils is not only exposing their children to remote anonymous attackers and trackers, but also bringing an open microphone into the lives of Jesus. those children's parents. You know, who knows what might be overheard in what's presumed to be a private setting and who would be to blame. Now, I fully recognize that the likelihood of any specific child or their parents being targeted through this is diminishingly low. I don't mean to suggest otherwise, but knowing what we now know, who would feel comfortable strapping one of those loose cannons onto their child's wrist? And that's my point. The photo of these devices is utterly at odds with what's going on inside them. It, it's deeply unsettling because they look so cute and harmless. Yet inside that colorful soft plastic shell is a communicating computer running a trojanized Android OS, which autonomously connects to a remote command and control server, and Amazon sells these things. The bullet points on Amazon's page says, under security and peace of mind for parents, Monitor child's location, set safe zones, and use remote audio monitoring through free parent-controlled app. Get alert if the child uses the built-in SOS button. Under easy communication, stay in touch, have a two-way voice call, use voice chat, or send emojis. Limit contacts to those authorized through the app to avoid undesired communication. Under user-friendly and comfortable, kids' phone watch features math game and interface with emoticons. And then finally, under other features, class time mode, alarm call, pedometer, up to four days standby time, Ilari safe family free multilingual Android iOS compatible app, Ability to add other Ilari smartwatch users to friends list. So the watches that the Dr. Webb researchers examined had default passwords of 123456. And most of them don't bother to employ encryption in their communications. They just use plain text. 
What this brings to mind is the glaring gap in consumer protection that currently exists in our tech industry. Because, you know, the difference between purchasing a well-designed Wi-Fi router that might still have an inadvertent security vulnerability and this colorful plastic child's watch that communicates without encryption with remotely located command and control servers continually sending back all of the child's movements and is able to autonomously download any additional software at any time, to me, seems extreme. I mean, it's... It like it takes the consumerness way down to sort of a, a different lower level. And who knows what they're doing? In the US, the engineers and scientists at Underwriters Labs are able to test toasters and vacuum cleaners because they're able to carefully examine and stress test the important functional safety aspects of those consumer products. But today's text gadgets, you know, tech gadgets, are closed black boxes which are actively hostile to reverse engineering. I don't see any solution to this mess other than to take every possible precaution. You know, we're able to place our IoT devices on their own segmented network. If these wristwatches also have Wi-Fi radios... Uh, placing them on the IoT Wi-Fi would help, but they can still spy. If oh, and kids, yeah, and the whole point of this is to follow your kid when they're out and about, not in the home network. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. I mean, and and so you know, to me, I just I would stay as far away from this Elari brand as possible, and I guess the only advice I would have, I mean, I could I could imagine the. As, as you listen to these bullet points, these seem like like cool things. Yeah, they're but, the kind you know, of features you'd want in a watch that's tracking your child. Yeah, like but but use Garmin or or yeah. use use a company, you know, an American company to begin with. I would say, yeah, yes. Apple exactly. has uh, watches that do all of this, probably at a much higher price, but they're yeah. available. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I just got a chill when I looked at these beautiful looking consumer devices for 50 bucks and and imagine you know, and well and we know how much kids like to emulate their parents right so so i'm sure johnny would love to have a watch like daddy has right you know that the, well, the daddy may even want and, johnny to have these capabilities right. that's the thing daddy and mommy want to track the kids the problem right. is who else is doing it right right so I, you're going to turn I, I on all those features because that's why you bought the watch is there a really low end Apple iPhone? No, there's a, a there's an I, Apple Watch SE that they make that you can configure for kids, uh, okay. and that's probably the way to go. But it's a few hundred bucks. It's not yeah. It's not cheap cheap. Yeah. I, again, to all of our listeners, buyer beware. Yeah. If if you want this, I'd go Apple. I mean, yeah, we, I agree. we know we know that it will be as well designed as it can be. Uh, I just don't know how you do any. I mean, you know, maybe Samsung, maybe you know, maybe another some other high end Android device. If you, you or or what about any of the Garmin-y sorts of yeah, things? Do any yeah, of yeah. the activity there, trackers do look do, do location? Problem is, there are a lot of uh, kids trackers in this category wow. uh, because they're inexpensive. You don't want to give a kid a three hundred dollar watch. They're no. small. They're built for kids. Their their functionality is considerably more limited. Because parents don't want kids, you know, making random phone calls either. Right. So there are, you know, there's this or is straight, a, or, you know, look at all the spam we got on our phones. You don't want your kid answering the phone <laughs> no. like some random stranger <laughs> exactly. in Lord only knows Hello? where. Hey, how's your RO <laughs> warranty? What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could be a problem. Oh. <sighs> Anyway, I just, uh, I just, the, the, for me, this was a wake up call and I wanted to share it because, boy, uh, you know, it's, it is, however bad you think it could possibly be, this suggests it's a lot worse than that. You know, the people selling this just don't give a crap about security or privacy. And you don't want to strap that on to any child's wrist. 